attitude is everything, dude. Hello, folks. How's it going out there today? It's a beautiful day here in Saskatchewan. She's the day before the Rough Riders take on the Ottawa Red Blocks. The depth charts weren't online yet, but it's pretty easy to tell, well, what I, who I think they'll probably be sticking into all the spots we're missing on uh, our roster. It's, I'm not gonna sugarcoat this one, folks. This is not gonna be an easy one to win. There's a lot of factors going against us in this game. And, and uh, let's start off with, we're on a short week again. And thanks to the great CFL planning, we're uh, taking on a team that came on a uh, bye week. And it's the second time we've had to do that. And CFL, we have to do it again against Toronto. Exact same scenario. We travel and they're on the bye week and we're going on a short week. Last time we did that, we ran out of gas and uh, in the second half and lost the game. You know, I don't know why a CFL can't plan better than that. At least if you're on a, a team on a short week, have them play a home game so they don't lose an extra game, extra day on travel. It's bullshit. But that's just one factor hurting us this game. That's for sure. A major one is all our injuries to our bread and butter defense and of an offensive line. I can start off with the defense. We're missing Lanier. We're missing Albright. We're missing De Beer. I don't even think we have any extra backups on the practice roster. In fact, I'm sure we don't. We're using them all on the roster. And uh, that's a major factor. And then for another kick in the pants, Thurman's out now too. Man, this crazy, crazy. You know, the front seven's really hurting big time. Yeah, with Thurman out, they're gonna have to move Avery over to middle. And LeClaire will be putting in more time over there on a weak side linebacker. Then they're gonna have to put in McLean. I didn't mind him in training camp. I'm amazed he hasn't gotten a chance earlier than this. And uh, uh, the only one I don't know for sure is if, how Williams is out there on the white side. Uh, if he's gonna play or they're gonna keep going with Henderson. Uh, I'm hard to say, I'll have to wait till it comes out. Yeah, it's either, it'd either be Williams or Henderson out there. I don't know if Williams is okay to go or they're just preferring to go with Henderson. That's about all that's on defense. It should be changed. But that being said, it's a lot of changes with all those other guys hurt. You know, we're pretty thin on the defensive line. I'm sure it'll be Saunders, Johnson, will be in there. Uh, but with Lanier out, that's a big, big, big gap to fill. The only good thing is Ottawa hasn't really racked up a lot of points this year. I think they're well down there than points scored. They're even below us, so. That might be one tick for us, but we don't have many ticks for us. Like Ottawa, they haven't lost at home yet. I think they're 4-0 at home. Another tick against us. And then we move over to the offensive line. 
which is a real disaster. And Swever's out now. Uh, and council, he quit or retired. I think he just quit. He's probably too sore. Hopefully he doesn't didn't listen to me. I wasn't much of a fan of his anyway. I watched that game and he was maybe average at best. So along the offensive line, it's going to be Reed out there uh, against and Fry has to come in, and then Godbar, Furland, and a brand new guy Jones. And folks, he's only—I think you believe he's only 23 years old. I'm not sure who uh, they'll play as backup. I wouldn't mind them giving that Daniel Johnson a shot. We brought in a big, big new kid, but I got a feeling it'll be Zur. Uh, all young guys, and uh, uh, I think one of the reasons why they're not going to put out Henderson, I mean Harris, you know, they're going to put Patterson to the fire. And with all these new guys, maybe he can use his legs to get away from the rush because uh, they're going to be have their hands full with uh, uh, their Ottawa defensive ends that Muldeen and, and Carter they're both up there with sacks so Jones and Reed are both going to be put to the test big time yeah, I don't have a good feeling in this one boy not at all a lot of factors against us but this is where you really have to test your next man up theory but our next man up are getting to be well down the pecking order in fact they're looking to sign guys that are cast off from other teams already this is absolutely terrible we are on our fourth offensive tackle and we're on our third offensive guard you know seven man already you know absolutely devastating and then to top it all off we're even louvers and receivers like crazy with shake and bake he's out and then Keyshawn Johnson came in and now he's out and uh Ah, uh, it'll make one of my viewers happy. He knows who he is out there. He always comments, he always wants to see Myers. Well, he's gonna get some playing time this week. That's for sure, I'm sure he'll be the guy in there. I don't know, like I said, the roster wasn't out yet, but I'm sure they'll be using him at wide receiver. And uh, maybe even run back some punts, who knows. Uh, Hickson's still in there. Yeah, uh, anyway, I'm picking Sass to win, but I don't know. That's just because I'm wearing my green all the time. I've got green sunglasses, but they won't be the odds on favorite. That's for sure. Not with all these factors going against them. I called a couple long shots last week taking them home games. I couldn't believe it with Winnipeg. That was quite the call in Calgary making the comeback, but I'm not taking Calgary this week. I'm taking Toronto and I'm taking Montreal for some reason. Maybe that kid still can play hot, that Alexander, but I, I'm just taking Montreal because of the strong defense and how Bo's been playing. Bo's been playing terrible. Hi. All right. Yeah, Bo's been playing terrible. That last game, he, he's back to his playing stink ball instead of football. And Elks over BC, that's another long shot. But I think they're on the comeback trail, the Elks. And I really like that Ty Ford. 
he makes a hell of a difference back there in the backfield. Yeah. Got the threat of running, but he's also got a damn good arm. Like last game, we got another guy came back and haunted us, Tevin Jones. He threw a couple perfect ones to, and burnt us, Tevin Jones. Always seems the riders have players that come back and that were with the riders and haunt us to win the game against us. All I hope for is uh, that the riders put up good effort in. It is going to be monumental for them to win this game with all these factors against them. I just want them to play right to the final whistle, play a hard, tough game, which they didn't do last game. You know, the first half, sure, they were in playing hard, but the second half, just, nah, they, the whole game, really, they just didn't seem to be in it, playing tough like they have played. That's been a lot of the things I've liked about the Rough Riders, how hard they competed right to the last whistle. And uh, they just didn't do it against Edmonton. But anyway, that's about it for this video. I'll see if I got the, the lineups right. Uh, Ottawa, that's another factor against us. I don't think they're missing a whole lot of key guys. And uh, uh, that Drew Brown's been playing pretty damn good. They even got a decent backup. And uh, with us, you know, we haven't got many backups that'll be coming in that are reliable. You're, you're down to your reservation. You're down to your reserves, reserves. Anyway, it's a game you can win, but a lot of factors against us. Let's just hope we can don't go on the three game losing streak and we start a winning streak again. Go one and oh again, somehow. I know it'll be tough, riders, but you can do it. Make us proud out there. Go, riders, go.